research shows the true importance of data, which brings us to our next session featuring Evan Binkley, Senior Manager, Global Logistics and Trade Systems and Operations Support at Best Buy. In our prep call, Evan, you said something that really resonated. You said, I firmly believe that data is going to be the challenge of the next decade for the retail industry. The operational expectations driven by the customer are moving at a faster pace not then technology, but then our ability to organize and streamline our data across platforms. And so I am really excited to talk to you today because this is such a key thing for folks to really understand. You know, yes, data is important. Yes, new technology is useful, but those things alone aren't going to get you where you need to be performance wise. You need alignment and collaboration across your people and processes in order for that data to really make an impact. So I'm really looking forward to diving into how Best Buy is making that happen with you today. So hi, Evan, welcome to the discussion. Thank you, Sarah. Yeah, looking forward to it. All right, so let's get started. So what challenges does Best Buy face within their supply chain and transportation operations? Yeah, so I think I'll start with transportation because that's kind of where I sit primarily. Uh, Best Buy, I think, like a lot of organizations, has a core set of data that it uses to run its operations, but then it relies really heavily on our external partners to, uh, in a way, be the source of truth of certain data elements. And this is pretty critical in partnership with an organization like Forkites, who can tap into those uh, partners and get those insights real time, which provides a level of uh, uh, visibility into the supply chain that otherwise would be frankly impossible. Uh, you're limited in a way by your internal applications in terms of how they consume data and then also the relationships that you have with however many uh, variety of different uh, external partners that are needed to pull that all together. So I think step one, by identifying someone or some company or some capability, again, we've chosen Forkites, to help pull that all together and be a hub of that information really helps streamline the data flow, uh, granularizes it in a way that makes it consumable and usable for analytics, and it presents it in a way to your user that they can actually hopefully garner some business insights. And that kind of brings me to the second thing is that you need people who are able to consume information and turn them into business insights. Because data alone is really not helpful unless you have some way of turning it into something that you can take action against and drive business value. Uh, so this, uh, again, not to over lean into forecasts, but they've done a great job with a lot of their reporting and visualizations and, and capabilities that help us understand what's going on. But there really is a people element to this. Uh, there, there needs to be a sense of proactiveness uh, in terms of how can I use the information available to me to drive value from both like a network design standpoint, what's the best way to deploy strategy, and also from a, a real-time inventory and supply chain management standpoint. Right. If you're, yeah, if you're not positioned in a way to take an insight, for an example, a carrier's late to a delivery and really understand what the impact is to drive a change, you're not gonna get the most value out of real-time insights and information. Uh, and this is where I think a lot of uh, capabilities like Control Tower and other uh, major initiatives that, um, you know, a lot of uh, in the, um, a little retail space are, are going after, they can fall flat because you need that organizational support uh, to drive to the solution. And then, uh, and then I, th I would say you're off to a good start. If you've got the people and a way to consume a set of data that is lined up properly, you know, you're on the journey. Absolutely. And I love the fact that we are going away from the traditional silos and moving into that collaboration and mm -hmm. focusing on people and data all at the mm -hmm. same time. So, you know, what did transportation and supply chain data look like bef like for Best Buy before you started working with Forkites? Sure. Well, so Forkites has really helped us move into the execution space, uh, space with a bit more um, uh, you know, direct insight into what's going on. So, so what that means for us is prior to Forkites, uh, which ha happened to also line up with some of our TMS and technology implementations, uh, we were very, well, I mean, I, I almost wanna say pen and paper, but really it was a matter of creating as best a plan we could 
providing that to our carrier partners, allowing them to execute, and then following up on the back end with insights provided by the same carrier partners. Right. Uh, and, and, you know, good human relationships can go a long way. And those kinds of business models can be effective, but you are really leaning heavy into a quite diverse set of uh, of analytics, because you're asking, you know, Schneider and Hunt and 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 so on for all of their um, ideas about how things went, and their KPIs might be structured a little bit differently. Everything's a little bit different, so you really create these um, uh, knowledge silos, and you create that. Uh, you know, unpromotable individual because they're so valued in role and they know their specifics and the deep uh, analytical knowledge of how they work right. with John, uh, you know, it, with this particular carrier. Mm -hmm. uh, so prior to four kites and really going on this transformation journey with technology, uh, we were in that space of, uh, you know, deep collaboration and, and human acumen providing any sort of insight and value into the business. It really is a limiter on growth. It's uh, a limiter on uh, structure and, um, uh, you know, sort of cent knowledge centralization. Four kites uh, allowed us to present that information in a somewhat standardized way. Uh, it allowed us also to tap into the track and trace and execution element of this is what's happening in my supply chain right now. Mm -hmm. uh, before four kites, that really wasn't wasn't even a, considered a thing. It, it was, you know, a valued analyst was someone that could work deeply with a carrier and also understand how that feedback from the carrier could inform future strategic initiatives. Four kites allowed us to standardize that, uh, understand it without those silos, as, as you referenced, and uh, really create a cross-functional change and develop initiatives that made sense uh, in a more holistic way. So it really has helped us start the journey of something of a fundamental shift um, that we're still on, certainly. Yeah, absolutely. But it, what it sounds like is that it's giving you more insight that you didn't mm -hmm. have before and accountability as well. I, I yep. think that we, those are the two words that I think that we would throw in there. I, I would I would say so. Yeah, accountability is uh, it's so important, and it's it's so important to be able to come to the table with your own baseline perspective of what you're expecting, and in a way that's informed by your own information, because then you're apples to apples. It, it's so hard to uh, try and leverage disparate sets of information to provide meaningful feedback to your partners, conduct, you know, world-class RFPs and create a carrier network that really makes sense for the business. But again, by having this structured, standardized, mm -hmm. real-time set of data, you can, you can make that move towards a more world-class space. Absolutely. So can you tell us a little bit about the journey that you've had with visibility data and how you're using it today? Because I think that would be really useful for the audience. Sure, sure. So uh, the, the journey with data, I mean, Best Buy has had a long journey with data. It's um, our supply chain has had numerous initiatives wherein we've tried to uh, create a data space for for all of our disparate systems and partners, um, and that's been hit, hit and miss uh, often. We we've landed on uh, something now that we have that's I would say stable, but it still has lots of gaps. I would say gaps with um, you know being able to link certain applications, being okay. able to really track and uh, the life of an order all the way through uh, you know, our applications in a way that actually tells the whole story. Um, there's timing gaps, uh, you know, maybe a 214 or a 315 EDI track, uh, you know, a status update comes in, uh, the timing can be wrong, it can't, maybe it misses being able to inform a certain operation uh, or so forth. So the data is, uh, it, it suffers from granularity um, issues wherein certain systems aren't the right granularity to match with others. Uh, right. it, so it suffers from timing gaps and it suffers from just all out straight up holes, right? So like this particular area is missing something. Mm -hmm. uh, sorry, yep. No, go ahead. I was just going to say that four kites really stepped in and filled that what's in transit, what's happening right now. And it also baselined that in a way that gave us that sort of standardization for that element. 
Uh, right now, our journey is taking us uh, in another direction, um, not away from Forecast, but in partnership with it and others uh, towards uh, GCP, our uh, Google Cloud Platform. Okay. Um, and uh, we're really making a strong effort to try and create that one-stop shop for, uh, for our information. And hopefully through the acquisition of the data into that kind of a space, pulling data and information from Forkites, our own TMS, WMS, et cetera, uh, we'll at least have it all in a, a solution that we can look at and say, well, what are the gaps? What are the holes? How do we get this progressed to where our users can truly escalate their, uh, uh, their business? Um, and then that's the next step is is uh, defining out that information and finally getting it to use. So mm -hmm. I would say that we are in the last maybe three or four years of what has been a 20 year journey uh, to get to a point where I would say our data is truly usable. Yeah, and you're able to really look at automating things, which is going to just increase efficiently efficiency exponentially, right? Yeah, so, well what what has the biggest what has been the biggest change you've seen for Best Buy with visibility data? Mm, boy, um, you know, I would say, uh, you know, as you kind of started in on, uh, I guess, a quote from a previous conversation, um, Best Buy has been pursuing technology at a pretty good clip. Uh, we've made a lot of progress since about, I don't know, 2017, 2016, uh, where we've uh, installed and upgraded a TMS. We've brought on four kites uh, from the from other elements of the distribution network. You know, we've uh, installed a new WMS. We've created better integration layers. We, we've really built out the arc, uh, architecture um, and we are hearing more a theme now of okay let's let's sweat the asset you know we put a lot of money and time into creating this architecture let's sweat the asset so that's what you're asking about i think really is how have we changed our business model what have we done with it i would say we're kind of starting that frankly um there's a lot of people who have been in role for a long time that like to do business a certain way and certainly are effective uh, but we're only really starting to scratch the surface of what's really available. I would say some meaningful elements of things that we've actually improved as a result of having data is we've been able to create uh, more dynamic routing, uh, wherein we're using okay. our real-time orders to adjust the route planning of certain loads, which um, we've said saved about 10 million a year. Wow. Uh, we yeah, that's been helpful. Uh, and that's uh, that, that I would say is informed by you know, Forkite's data, but it, but it also leverages heavily new TMS capabilities and optimization. Uh, we've, we've looked at RFP in a little bit of a new way in some elements. We've diversified our LTL network. Um, okay. you know, so we have more LTL carriers now. Um, and uh, we're trying to get better visibility into our white glove services for goods not for resale as new store planning and setup and, and so on. And, and those are kind of harder spaces. But I think really over the course of the next couple of few years, we're, we're going to see a pretty dramatic shift in really the way Best Buy perceives data as a necessary ingredient to success. Yes. Yeah. And this is going to mean that people really are going to be challenged to not only look backwards and say what happened, what could we do better, but to look forwards and say what's coming and what do we need to do now? Yes, I love that. So that actually brings me to our last question. What advice would you give to another retail company looking to improve their supply chain oper operations? Wow, cool question. Um, so I think, and this comes from, I have a lot of background in, in project management, probably more so than I do in operations and um, okay. moving on to operations more recently. But from a, from a pure project deployment standpoint, um, I would uh, say that if you're looking at these amazing things that are coming out or have been established in the market, uh, you know, you think about like con I, I, control tower is top of mind for me mm -hmm. uh, because we really do need to get folks to step into the use of uh, the internet of things and the cross-functional uh, uh, visibility capabilities, machine learning. And, and this is sort of, I feel like where a lot of supply chain organizations are moving towards. Right. Um, there's, there's, I would say two things. First of all, um, make sure that you do have a really good understanding of the uh, the data landscape. What data do you own? What data do you need from outside? And, mm -hmm. and how do you need to make sure that 
all of that's being pulled together. Can you do it yourself? Do you need uh, partners, uh, partner or partners? You know, there's there's lots of different folks in the industry that provide those kinds of support. But to really be honest, because it's so hard to uh, consume or acquire, I should say, data from in the transportation space, you know, uh, however many carriers you deal with, potentially the, right. the vendors that you're getting uh, shipping are shipping to you mm -hmm. uh, and so on. Uh, if you're in manufacturing, you know, there's a whole other layer of complexity. Um, it, so just be really honest, like don't, don't bite off more than you can chew. Think about maybe partnering to get that um, streamlined. And then I think the next part of that, as you're going on these journeys to evolve, um, you can't ever start changing early enough. So the change management element and the, the human side, the organizational structure around a vision of using data in a different way is a holistic mindset shift and pulling in people that have been on that journey and understand what that means for the people who work for you is really critical because there's nothing more upsetting to a team that has been doing business a certain way and is asked to flip a switch. I know most business leaders know this, but I think people undervalue um, or I guess under anticipate the degree of a change that something like a data-driven journey can really take people on. So I guess those two things, baseline your data, make sure your people are brought along on the journey. Such amazing advice. And I'm so glad you shared that with us. And I'm sure the audience is feeling the same way as well. Thank you so much, Evan, for joining me for this discussion today. Absolutely, Sarah. It was a, it was a great pleasure. Thank you. Thank you.